All right, I want to show you how to determine which property is in action when you're doing some of these homeworks. So I just want to quickly and briefly show you um, how each of these five properties work. So we have the commutative property, the associative property, the identity property, the inverse property, and I think the most important of them all is this last one because it's used in a lot of higher math classes, the distributive property. So let me just take a quick second and show you how each of these properties work. Now the first property is called the commutative property, not commutative property. I hear that a lot from students, but it's the commutative property. And I know this is not an English lecture, it's more of a math. But if I was to ask you what the root word was, you'd see it'd be commute, right? Which means to move. I used to work for a company um, in a major city here. And I used to, instead of driving in on the turnpike, I used to take the commuter rail, um, the purple line, the MBTA. And so it's called the commuter rail because commute means to move. It means to travel, all right? It means to move around. So the commutative property works for two different operations here. If you saw a 5 plus 3, obviously the answer to that is 8. But could I swap these two numbers around? Could I move them, in other words? and still come up with the exact same answer? Yeah, no problem, because 3 plus 5 is still giving me 8. So all I did was I commuted these numbers, I moved them, and I still got the same result. Well, it also works for multiplication. All right, I could write 5 times 13, which is uh, 5 times 3, rather, which is 15. Or I could write it as 3 times 5 and still get 15. So I can commute these guys, I can move them, literally move them, and still come up with the exact same result. So that's how the commutative property works. It only works for adding and multiplying. Okay, the second property is called the associative property. And the associative property often gets confused with the commutative property, and I'll show you why. The associative property works like this. Let's say I had three things, like 1 plus 2 plus 3. And I am going to, uh, I'm going to put a set of parentheses around the 2 and the 3, which means I want you to associate. I want you to buddy up. I want these two to be friends here before they tackle that one. So I'm forcing you, the, the, uh, the, the, the person working out the problem here, to add these two numbers first, which is 5, and obviously plus one more gives you 6. But if I wrote the numbers the ex in the exact same order, but put the parentheses around the 1 plus the 2, now I am asking you to, uh, to do a different association, a different grouping here. I want these guys to be friends first, to work these out first, and then add the 3. Um, so let's see, this still gives me a 3, plus 3 is obviously the same answer. Do you notice that the order of the numbers didn't change? Look, they both start with 1, 2, 3. So when the order doesn't change, but what's inside the parentheses changes, that's the associative property. When the order changes, that's the commutative property. Big difference. Hey, associative property also works for multiplication. So let me show you that real quick. How about 2 times 3 times 4? I can put the parentheses around these. This gives me 12 times 2 which is 24, and I hope you see that if I associate the 2 and the 3 first, it still gives me the same result. 2 times 3, which is 6, times 4 is 24. So again, notice that the order of the numbers didn't change. Look, they both start with 2, 3, 4. So the order of the left-hand side here didn't change. That's a big hint that it's the associative property and not the commutative property. All right, moving on. Let's talk, let's talk about identity property. Um, now, I'm not trying to make fun of people like this, because I have known some, but have you ever heard someone say, uh, I don't know who I am, I'm trying to figure out who I am in this world? And oftentimes we say that that person is having an identity crisis. They don't know who they are. So what I often say to them is, why don't you go to the nearest mirror and look in the mirror and you will see who you are. You are who you are. See, 5 is looking in the mirror. Think of this as 0. Adding 0 is kind of like being in the mirror here and saying, I don't know who I am. Well, just 5 is standing in front of a mirror and sees itself. right? So that's the identity property. When, when you start with a value and you add 0 to it and you end up with the exact same value, 
then you have the identity property, right? If you end up with the same thing. Works for multiplication. Um, let's see, how about uh, 3 times 1 is equal to 3. See, the number that we started with is the exact same number we ended up with. So in this case, the 1 is acting as the mirror. Right, 3 is doesn't know who it is. It's standing in front of a mirror, and it sees itself. So when you're adding, it's 0 that you add. It's the mirror. When you're multiplying, it's 1 that you multiply by. It gives you the exact same number. Um, so that's how the identity property works. If you start with the same number and end with the same number, you have the identity property. Oftentimes, that one is confused with this property called the inverse property. Now, the way this guy works is, uh, let's use 5 again. If I add to 5 a negative 5, I'll get a 0 value. So we say that these two things here, 5 and negative 5, are inverses of each other. They're inverses of each other because it gives me a result of 0 when I add. Right? So do you see that I used 0 up here for identity, but I ended up with the exact same number I started with? Do you see here for inverse, these two numbers we say in math kind of cancel each other out and I end up with a 0? That's called the inverse property. It also works for multiplication. Now, the way multiplication works is um, I'll have 4 fifths times 5 fourths and I'll get a 1 out of that if I multiply them. We say in this case that these guys are inverses of each other. Maybe a fancier way to say that is that they are reciprocals of each other reciprocals. Okay, so if you end up with a 1 and you are multiplying or a 0 and you are adding, that's the inverse property. In the identity property, you're adding 0 to a number and end up with the exact same number you started with. Hopefully that's a little bit more clear to you now for identity and inverse properties. All right, and the last one, the most important one of them all is the distributive property. This one's kind of easy. But still, you know, if, uh, let's see here, I'll make up uh, p minus 4, something like that. Still, this is, although this is uh, probably the easiest one of them all, it's also, I think, the most important one of them all. And there are two things to remember when you're using the distributive property. The first thing is the math operation that is being involved here is multiplication. Right? This is going to be 5 times p, there's my minus sign, and it's also going to be 5 times 4. Okay, so the math operation that happens with the distributive property is multiplication. That's 5p minus 20. I guess you could write it that way if you wanted to. Okay. Um, the other thing, too, is notice that I had a set of parentheses to start with. And once I distribute that 5 to both of these terms inside, I don't have a parentheses anymore. So once you distribute, the parentheses are gone. You've got to remember that as well. Okay, so now I've shown you all five of those properties. Why don't you take a look at this short quiz I just made up here, right? short quiz, and pause the video for a second and see if you can figure out which property is in action in each of these seven cases. So hit the pause button right now and take this short little quiz. I'm going to give you the answers in just a second. Okay, so let's see. If you're back now and I've, you're looking for the answers to these, I'll go through this very quickly. You should have had an answer of commutative property for the first one. All right, because we just swapped those two numbers around. You see that? We swapped 5 sevenths and negative 19 right there. Uh, the th second one here is the associative property. All right, don't just abbreviate that one with the first three letters. Hey, get that joke? Okay, anyways, um, that's the associative property because, look, the order of the numbers didn't change. Negative 5, 12, 8. Negative 5, 12, 8. Okay, this one here is the definitely the inverse property because we were multiplying these two things, and look, we ended up with a 1. So this one here is the inverse property. Uh, this D here is the commutative property again. I showed you that one again. And you can tell because, look, this stuff inside the parentheses didn't change. It's still 5 plus 6. So the order of these numbers was swapped around, right? That was moved. These things were moved. OK, let's see. The uh, fifth one here, E, is the identity property. OK, 3 is looking in the mirror and sees itself. Uh, F, let's see, F is the distributive property. We distributed 5 to both of these terms over here and came up with this stuff.
And the last one, now this is probably the trickiest one of them all, but I'll end with this one. This last one, I hope you see, any number over itself is really just a 1. So I'm really multiplying 5 ninths times 1 and getting itself. Now this looks a little different, I realize, than what you started with, but these two fractions are really exactly the same. Therefore, this is the identity property. Hope you did well on that quiz.